Hello everyone, today we're talking about why your glutes aren't growing and how you can fix it. First, as always, we're starting with a warm-up. Okay, so before starting with my tips, I wanted to kind of explain what I'm talking about exactly so there isn't any miscommunication. So basically, what I'm referring to is a lagging body part. It's not that you haven't trained it at all and that you're like, oh my god, why aren't my glutes growing? But you haven't really done anything. I am talking about that you really try your best to make your glutes grow in the gym and that you feel like you're doing everything you should be doing, but that they still aren't growing. I'm just going over some dynamic warm-up exercises. This one is one of my favorites for my hips. So whenever I'm training my glutes, I always make sure that I warm up my hips really, really well, because that really helps with my range of motion. And I usually just do a few exercises and repeat them for like six or eight reps. But I always do dynamic stretches, so I make sure that I keep moving and I don't just do static ones where you really try to hold the same position for like 20 seconds. I do those after. This one's really great for your hamstrings as well. But again, make sure that you keep moving. And then we're switching sides. I feel like I'm almost finished. I always try to assess how my body is feeling. So for example, when it's a little bit later in the day and I already walked my dog and I maybe rode the bike, then my body just feels more warmed up. And then I don't really need as much work compared to when it's like the first thing that I do in the day. I definitely feel that the coffee is helping. Okay, let's go. Oh no, I lost the nail. First thing that I wanted to talk about is exercise execution. So are you really performing the exercises that you're doing with good form? Because if you perform them with good form or with good technique, that ensures that the intended muscles that you're trying to target are actually working. I, nine out of 10 times, recommend people to actually lower the weight instead of increasing it and really focusing on form. And until you absolutely nail your form, don't increase weight. Always room for improvement. Okay, so I'm actually I'm going to start with the Bulgarian split squat. I know, love that for me. Um, basically, I think most of us have seen that hack where you ensure that you set it up correctly to target your glutes. So what you're going to do is you're going to sit down on the bench, put your working leg, like stick it out straight. And then this basically positions your foot correctly. So now when I go and stand on my feet and put this one back on the bench, I have the perfect stance. What I always try to do is I make sure that I have a slight lean forward because that stretches my glute more. Instead of when I'm targeting my quads, I would have a much closer stand and I would have a more upright position to really focus on hitting those quads. That's not what I'm doing today because today I'm trying to grow my glutes. Every exercise that you pick has a specific role in your program. So you either pick it because it trains the specific muscle during a specific part of the movement. Uh, maybe you pick it because it targets 
that division of the muscle that is lacking. Now the order of which you perform your exercises is actually key here because if you never, let's say that I really wanna do the Bulgarian split squat because I really wanna become stronger at it and I feel like it really helps me with training my glutes because I have the most insane mind-muscle connection with the Bulgarian split squat. However, if I always do this exercise as my fifth exercise, I already expended so much energy with the other four exercises that I just did, which is why the main exercise for me, the main compound exercise that I really want to train and I really want to become better at and I want to progressively overload with, that is the exercise that I always start with. Now it's getting interesting because you have different movement patterns during which you can target your glutes and ideally I would like to include at least one of each with every glute workout. The first one is that we just did which is a knee dominant one so that is your Bulgarian split squat basically anything that has squat in it and then the next one is the bridge so we have the hip thrust we have the glutes bridge we have the cast glute bridge and then the third one that i always try to make sure that i include in any glute workout that i do is obviously your hinge so we have our romanian deadlift we have our stiff leg deadlifts we have any deadlift you can imagine, anything that involves you hinging your hips is a really great one to include as well. Now I'm going to do the glute bridge and I'm actually going to do a very interesting rep scheme, which I'll talk about after I finish my set. Okay, so basically what I did is I did eight reps of the cast glute bridge and then I immediately did six reps of the hip thrust so just a full range of motion after the Bulgarian split squat Ooh, definitely need my music again Something else that we also want with our glute workouts, especially if we feel like they aren't growing, is that you want to work with opposing resistance profiles. So basically you want to have exercises that train your glute max during the lengthening position, but also exercises that are the hardest whenever you are glute max is in the shortened position. So exercises that are the hardest whenever the glute max is at the shortened position is for example, the cast glute bridge. Exercises that are hardest in the shortened position have a upper glute bias so if you feel like the upper division of your glutes is lacking if you really want to build that shelf then make sure that you actually include exercises that have a bias towards it for example this one I've talked enough so let's do set number three So an exercise that is the hardest when the glute max is at the lengthened position is, for example, a Romanian deadlift. Exercises that are hardest when the glute max is at the lengthened position actually have a bias towards the lower glute. So if you feel like your lower glute needs a bit more volume or you want to specifically target that area, then make sure that you include exercises such as the Romanian deadlifts, but also the leg press, for example. And that also refers back to what I was saying while I was doing my Bulgarian split squat. If you feel like you really want to focus on targeting the lower division of your glute max, you really want to build that. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you, for example, prioritize them during your workout. So start with the Romanian deadlift. Deadlift. <laughs> So start with the Romanian deadlift and make sure that you progressively overload on this exercise. There are a few things that I like to focus on whenever I'm doing the RDL and really want to focus on targeting my glutes. But the main thing is that I keep a slight bend at my knees because if I keep my knees straight or as straight as I can, then that shifts more tension towards my hamstrings. And now I love working my hamstrings but today I'm trying to build my glutes so therefore I keep a slight bend at my knees because that stretches my glutes that little bit more which is great and as always with the Romanian deadlift try to focus on pushing your hips 
back and not on lowering your upper body to the floor. Another thing that I like to focus on with the Romanian deadlift specifically is that I stay within the efficient range of motion. So that means for me that I lower my bar until approximately here. Because if I go down any further, you will see that the tension actually shifts away from my glutes and towards my lower back. Same as whenever I'm coming up. I don't just want to stand up straight. I want to make sure that I keep that tension on my glutes. So my effective range of motion is basically from here. I squeeze my glutes until here. Two things that are so, so important here as well. And the first one is how hard are you training? Always try to go close to failure. I don't go to failure, but I go very close to failure just because you really want to make sure that you train hard. Like that is what makes it count. It is those last few reps where you really, really struggle and you have to push through and you feel like giving up, but you don't give up because that is the area that is uncomfortable. And that is the area where you actually allow yourself to grow. Like you ask more of your body than you did previously, which is why it is so hard and why you're struggling. So. Training hard is a really, really big thing here, especially when you're targeting your glutes, because your glutes can handle so much, like they are so strong. But don't go to failure because we don't want to risk getting injured because that is like taking a few steps back. So make sure that you get close to failure, but don't actually go to failure. And then the other thing that is really, really important as well, which is exactly, it's not the opposite, but it's kind of like the opposite. And that is that you have to make sure that you recover from your workout. So. I said it before, rest and recovery is absolutely key. You cannot grow if you don't give your body enough time to heal itself. And then the fourth exercise for today that we're going to do is the hyperextension with a glute focus. So whenever you're doing the hyperextension, make sure that the pad is below your hips. So you actually have a full range of motion. If I want to have a glute focus, which is the goal for today, I round my upper back and then I really focus on squeezing my glutes to generate momentum. Now, I also make sure that I keep a slight bend at my knee, then I squeeze my glutes in order to come up. Okay, we arrived at my favorite part of the workout, which is the last exercise. So for the last exercise, I'm going to do an accessory movement and I'm going to do glute kickbacks in the cable. What I'll be doing to help me with my range of motion is I'm going to elevate my non-working leg, so my standing leg slightly by stepping on a plate. And then I can really focus on maximizing that stretch in the glute of my working leg because I can even put my leg in front of the other and then I'm going to slightly kick outwards while keeping my upper body upright. That's the game plan. Now let's see if I still have energy for it. I'm going to do two sets. I'm going to go very slow. I'm really going to give it every last fiber energy that I have. Uh, and then it's time for me to go home and have breakfast. <laughs> That was it for the workout. So now the final thing that we need to do is do some static stretches, make sure that we're lengthening our muscles. Back to flexibility again. Always try to work with your breath here. So I usually hold any stretch for, let's say 20 seconds. And then with every exhale, I try to push myself a bit deeper into the stretch. I know people often say, oh, genetics, like genetics is a big component in what your muscles look like, where you store your fat first, body composition, like genetics definitely plays a role. However, to say that you can't grow your glutes because of genetics, that's an excuse because there are so many more variables that 
come into play when it comes down to training, when it comes down to building muscle mass. And only one of them is genetics. So think about, for example, your work ethic. How hard are you pushing yourself in the gym? Are you taking your sets close to failure? Are you just kind of going in the gym and doing your standard 12 reps and then go out again? How disciplined are you? How consistent are you? How consistent are you with your nutrition? Like, do you actually focus on eating enough protein or getting enough nutrients in so that your body can actually grow? How good are you with managing your stress levels? Are you taking enough time to rest? Are you taking enough time to recover? There are so many things important when it comes to seeing the results of the work that you put into the gym that goes beyond genetics. I always feel like make sure that you have all those variables in check first and then if you are stuck at a level, if you feel like you can't really grow beyond that level, if you can't really become stronger beyond that level and you've done anything that you can possibly think of, like you've got trainers, you've switched up your training style, just anything, then you can say, okay, maybe it's genetics. But honestly, I, I haven't even reached that point yet where I'm like, okay, I can't really grow my, grow my glutes any further. It's like a genetic thing, like no. So, thank you for joining my session. I'm going home now and I'm going to make breakfast and then I'm going to talk about my last point of this video, one that is absolutely key if you feel like you really want to grow your glutes but you can't. So let's spin to breakfast. <laughs> I can't spin because I film by myself, but let's just do a dip to breakfast. I wanted to explain the last one while I was having breakfast, but I was too hungry to talk. <laughs> so I just had breakfast, which was really nice. I made the apple pancakes and now I'm just quickly going to apply a hair mask. I'm using the Olaplex number three and then I let it marinate for a few hours um, and then I'm going to wash it out. But basically the last tip that I wanted to say is that you have to make sure that your nutrition is aligned with your goals. So that means that you have to make sure that you eat enough, you have to make sure that you eat enough protein. I've been on this gaining journey for 12 weeks now and I gained between five and six pounds during those 12 weeks and that obviously creates a really good environment for your body to build muscle and then if you apply all the things that I just mentioned in this video and you make sure that you progressively overload your muscles over time, then your muscles will grow. This is all marinating now i'm just going to add some oil to my scalp this is turning into a self-care video all right so now that that is all done i am going to end the video here because that was actually everything that i wanted to say today so thank you so much for watching and then i'll hopefully see you in the next video bye guys